Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Another month has gone and we are here to talk about the March favorites. For myself, I guess I should have said I'm here to talk about what I've been loving in March. And honestly, I have six things to talk about, which is not nearly what I normally have to talk about. I feel like I've been changing it up a lot. Um, I've been acquiring quite a few things in March, which leads me to try them when I acquire them and then I acquire something else. <laughs> so I haven't been repeating a ton of stuff and I'm not going to put a product in here to talk about that is not truly a favorite. Like I'm not going to talk about something just for the sake of talking about it. But let's go ahead and jump in. I will say out of the six things, three of them are beauty counter. It's kind of beauty counter heavy this month, but like I said, I'm being truthful. Two of them are skincare. One of them is a makeup item. And then we'll talk about the other three. And I do have one fail. Let's go ahead and jump in. No need for a longer introduction for something this small. Um, all right. So the beauty counter stuff that I have been loving one, two of them are skincare. The first one is a cleanser. Now I, as I get older, I feel like when I have my period, I am breaking out more. It is not an elaborate breakout by any means. Okay. I understand that I have it good when it comes to the breakout department. However, I do tend to get a couple of spots here, like one or two on my nose and then a couple on my chin. In the past, I have tried to put, you know, like spot treatments. Uh, I mean, I remember I used like clean and clear back in the day and nothing really worked. This I started using probably not soon enough because I've had it for quite a while, less than a year, but quite a while. And it's the counter control clear pore cleanser. But I will say I pulled this back out because I watched um, a video from uh, Coffee Break with Danny a while ago that said, and she was talking about this, about how it was the only thing that had cleared up her back knee, her acne that was on her back. And she had tried countless things. So I was like, mate, well, I need to just try that because, you know, this is marketed as like an oily skin line. So I never reached for it for myself personally. I used the toner, um, you know, in my kit and stuff occasionally, but I just never reached for it myself. So I pulled this back out on the nights that I had some breakouts. And I'm not kidding you, overnight they were 50% reduced and the next night they were gone. Like I could use this two nights in a row and I did not have breakouts anymore. So I cannot speak highly enough about this, the Clear Pore Cleanser. It's a very, um, can you hear it? It's very liquidy. It's almost a gel consistency and it's got tiny, 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 tiny exfoliation beads in there. They are beads. They're round. They have no jagged edges and they're almost like a silicone feel. So, um, you don't really, I like, I don't even really feel like I get a ton of exfoliation from this, but it does have great ingredients to help with breakouts. So I have been absolutely loving that the past couple months when I do have breakouts because it really does clear them up quickly. The next thing is actually part of the Counter Man collection, with, which is the Beauty Counter skincare collection specifically designed for men. But this is the Cooling Aftershave Tonic. And you're probably like, why in the world are you talking about the Cooling Aftershave Tonic? Because I use this. Now, I've actually started keeping it under my sink. Chad's had to like take it out of mine a couple times. He's like, why do you have this over here? And I'm like, because there is nothing better for my bikini line after I shave than this. It absolutely does not sting whatsoever. I mean, I can put like four times the amount that I would normally put and it would not sting. And I just take, like it comes in like a little kind of dropper where you just kind of shake it out. And I just shake a cup like two or three times in my hands and just kind of pat it on the area where I shaved. And I'm not kidding you, it doesn't sting, but I have not had one red bump, one ingrown hair, one anything that I would normally get. And I mean, I have tried shaving cream, shaving gel, conditioner, I've tried it all. And I still would occasionally get those issues. I do not get that if I remember to put this on after I shave my bikini line. So that's why it's in my favorites. I meant to put it in my favorites last month, but I think I just had too much to talk about and I forgot. But I have been using this for at least uh, probably three months now for my bikini line and absolutely love it. It smells like a man, but it doesn't linger. It smells good actually. 
Okay, and finally, this is, or finally for Beauty Counter, this is a makeup item, and it is the Dew Skin Moisturizing Coverage. I talked about this. I send out a monthly newsletter for my Beauty Counter um, interested people, and this was my product spotlight last month, and I just posted a video a couple days ago on my other channel really talking about this because I flipping love this. And I didn't show it enough love when I first got it because I've had it for a while. But this is like the tinted moisturizer. It's not the foundation product. It's more of the tinted moisturizer because again, it has SPF 20 and it's zinc oxide 14%. But this is the most gloriously luminous, youthful product. Like I hope Excuse me. I hope that it comes across on camera. Like, are you seeing? It's not even all the way rubbed in. But the difference between this hand, I know it's catching the light because I can see it in the viewfinder. And this hand, this boring old hand. This hand and this hand. Okay. I've been using this as a primer. I don't have it on today because the foundation I chose to wear today, I prefer not to use a primer at all with. But this, if you want that lit from within glow, <clears throat> like, oh, my skin is really this dewy all the time. I just decided to put a little bit of foundation over the top of it. That is going to be what you want to do. You can just use this. In fact, I have a lot of clients that prefer that. It's just more of a sheer coverage. So most of the time, I prefer to put another foundation over it. But oh my goodness. Oh, and it feels so smooth. Anyways, I've been using this a lot this probably the past two months because I started using it in... February a lot, but this y'all mm, I love this and I'm in the color number two I believe they have five shades, but it being a like tinted moisturizer product. It's very forgiving Like probably five or six different shades of skin could use number two All right, let's finish up with two kind of three other makeup products this one I got as a gift with purchase and I have been loving it. And y'all are going to be like, why are you loving it? You don't ever wear this product. And you're right until now. I am not a huge eyeliner fan myself. I love to tight line. I love to give the effect of a thicker lash line. But I personally just don't like the look of a liner on me. I feel like it's not as fresh. I, I don't know. I just feel like it doesn't look right on me. I use it on a ton of my clients, so I'm not knocking people who do. It's just a personal preference. So when I got this in a gift with purchase, this is the Jane Iredell Misty Coal Eyeliner in Smoky Quartz. First of all, I love the packaging. I was intrigued by the packaging because I feel like I've seen something else in this packaging, but I can't think of what it is. Anywho, you open it up, and the actual product is inside. Now, there are a lot of websites, and I believe even on Jane Iredell's website, that calls this a powder eyeliner, but it looks almost like a gel. So the beauty of this is that it performs like a gel as far as like intensity, pigmentation, but it goes on with the ease of a powder, which I love because if I ever do wear eyeliner, the majority of the time I will just use a darker eyeshadow because I just feel like powders are easier to manipulate on eyelids that aren't 20 years old, shall I say? So it, that's the actual eyeliner product. And then in the top, the brush comes out. And normally I'm like, whatever, I'm not even going to give the brush that comes with the product a try because it's never what I want. But for some reason, I didn't even try to dig for an eyeliner brush, which I don't really have that much of on my vanity because I don't wear eyeliner. And I decided to use this. This is what it looks like. Really tiny, flat brush. It's not angled, but I don't find you need it to be angled. So I have this product on today. I used it in the same video I was talking about where I talked about the Dew Skin. Oh, the ease of this product. It literally glides on, but you have enough playtime to smoke it out but it doesn't transfer. Like once it sets, it sets. So I love this brush so much that I went and bought the Jane Iredell Detail Brush, which looked online to be very similar to this, just in an actual brush form. I haven't received it yet, but I'm hoping that it is because I love this brush so much. And I feel like for eyeliner, you cannot get better. So I've really been enjoying this and I've been using eyeliner probably 
30% of this month since I have gotten this, which is 30% more than I typically do. <laughs> okay, in the last video that I put up, I talked about how I have really been leaning towards pinks this month. Now, you can't tell today with this look, but I have really been liking the pink look. I just feel like it's spring appropriate as I look out my window and see pink buds of flowers on the tree across the street. Like, it's just seasonally appropriate and fresh and I am just really liking it. So I had also talked about in that video that I have really been loving using cream products this month, which is a little bit out of my comfort zone. I, it's not really, I wouldn't even say my comfort zone, but I just don't use cream products that much. These two I got as a sample. I paid for them, but you can go on citrinenaturalskin.com and you can pay like, I think it's $3 a sample, or you can get five samples for $15. And then if you want more, it's $3 a sample. So I got these two samples from there. And I don't even know, did I pay for these? Okay, I paid for this and then they sent me this one as part of their like samples that they send with every order. Anyways, it doesn't matter. These are two gorgeous cream blushes. This one is the Tata Harper Voluminizing Cheap in, Cheek and Lip Tint and Very Sweet. And this is what I used in that video. Let me swatch it for you. And this is what I've come to find out. Both of these are blushes that, will, that come in either a pan or a little pot. And after using these, I have come to figure that I think I like the formula of cream blushes a little bit better that come that way versus ones that come in the stick. Because the ones that come in the stick, because of their packaging and because they need to stay in that stick formation, they're going to be a little bit drier and less creamy, which only makes sense because of the way they are packaged. I get that. But I feel like the ones that comes in the pots or the ones that come in a pot, tongue tied this morning, are way easier to blend and look even more luminous on the cheeks. So this is the Tata Harper in Very Sweet. Isn't that so pretty? You can see the luminosity when I do my hand like that. Oh, it's so pretty. And then this one is the Keir Weiss blush in Reverence. Oh, 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 just stuck my finger in it. This one is a more like pastel pink, but oh man, nonetheless, gorgeous. So that is the Keir Weiss in Reverence. Now, my only complaint with these is that I don't know which one to purchase the full size of first. Which one do y'all like better? This is the Tata Harper and Very Sweet, and that is the Keir Weiss in Reverence. They're different enough because you can see almost, the Tata Harper has a little bit more of a sheen than the Keir Weiss, but they both look very like youthful on the skin, I want to say, just because they are creams. So I don't know which one do you like better, and tell me what is your favorite cream blush. If you're a cream blush lover, tell me what that is, because I'm really, really getting into them, and I will be buying one of these in the full size, if not both. I just got to decide what's going to be the first one. Oh, so pretty. Okay, the last kind of makeup item is brushes, and y'all probably know what I'm going to talk about, because I mentioned it in a couple of videos this past month. These are the Sonia G I Pro Set brushes. I did not get these on the first round. And then the lovely people at Beautylish text me when things are available for pre-order and you just can't say no to them. So I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and send me some. I want to try them. I've heard good things. I mean, I love my Wayne Goss. It could it really be that much better than Wayne Goss. So like I got them in two days before they were even available on the website for the second time. Look at these beauties. I know you've seen them everywhere because everybody's been talking about them since they launched months ago. And I'm late to the game because I really did not know if I wanted to drop $150 at one time on just five brushes. I am so glad I did. Oh my goodness. Oh, these are... Mm. Okay. I don't even want to say they're better than Wayne Goss. I feel so bad. But they're kind of better than Wayne Goss. Not by like a... Like a landslide. I mean, it's not like, holy cow, drop every Wayne Goss brush you've ever used and only use these. It's not like that. I still use my Wayne Goss and I still love them. And I haven't tried the Sonia G face brushes. So, so I can't speak to the comparison between the Wayne Goss face brushes and the Sonia G ones. All that to say, y'all, get the brushes. If you are able, 
Now, don't go and buy $150 worth of brushes if you aren't able. It's not life or death here, okay? It's just makeup, it's just brushes. I never, ever, ever, ever want to tell people to go buy something when they are not financially able to do so. If you are, I cannot recommend these enough. I cannot recommend these enough. So much so that today I used this palette on my eyes. This is the Lorac Pro 4, which I love Lorac shadows, but I think they're the most well known for the most amount of fallout. Like always has, always will. They just, you tap your brush in it very lightly and powder goes everywhere. When I used these brushes today for this palette and I used four colors out of here, I didn't get a single bit of fallout. Cause y'all know now I'm doing my foundation and concealer first, not a single bit of fallout using these brushes. It's magic. It's pure magic and it's so good. So I can't, recommend those enough. Now these, they are natural hair brushes. So if you are um, cruelty free, you're obviously not going to want to get them, but I now want her face brushes. So also if you have her face brushes, let me know what your favorite ones are. Cause I don't know if I'm going to start with a set. I think I'm just going to try one at a time. So let me know what your absolute favorite ones are down below. All right. Uh, real quick, another favorite that I have that I obviously I'm not going to show you because it's a class and I meant to talk about this honestly the past two months of favorites and I started um, doing a boxing class and it's from Title Boxing and I don't know, I think they're nationwide, I don't know how many, you know, actual clubs they have in each state or how saturated they are across the nation but I am pretty sure they are available nationwide and I just like to mix it up. I mean, I'm still, I still go to the gym. I still lift my weights. I still do my cardio, but once a week, I like to do something a little bit different just to mix it up, to keep my body guessing. And so I started title boxing probably two, two and a half months ago and I absolutely love it. It is a great workout. They have 45 minute workouts. They have an hour long workouts. They go by super fast. They put it in like three different sections. So like for instance, the hour workout, the 15 minutes is like a warm up, which is kind of funny because it's totally not a warm up. I mean, you're doing burpees and mountain climbers and you're, you're full on working out in those 15 minutes. And then you have 30 minutes of boxing and then you have 15 minutes of abs. And it is such a good workout, y'all. I am no stranger to the gym. I am no stranger to working out. The first boxing class I took, like Chad had to help me get out of the bed. I could not move anything on my body, which to me, I love. I love that feeling. I mean, it's not as fun when you're going through it. It tells me that my muscles are working, that they were worked differently than they have been worked before. And I just really love it. So if you are wanting to change up your workout a little bit and have one of those near you, I would recommend checking it out. You can get your first workout free to test it out. And then they have a lot of different options for, you know, joining. All right, my fail for the month. This is one of the classic, everybody loves it, which means Mandy's not going to, or Mandy loves it, which means nobody else is. <laughs> I've talked about that before. I am, I'm, I mean, it just is what happens. I feel like everything that blows up around YouTube, I try it and I don't like it. Maybe not everything, but a lot of stuff. I'm just not one of those bandwagon people that can get that can get it to work for them. And this one is the Cover FX Gripping Primer. Everybody's been talking about this. I think Tati was like the first one to really blow it out of the park. It was sold out everywhere for forever. I uh, tried it. And I will say I liked it the first day I used it. I don't remember what uh, foundation I used with it. The next day I used it. Let me show you the foundation. I used it with my Fit Glow Beauty Vita Active Foundation. I've never had a more worse experience. Now, I already knew that I really liked this foundation. I'd used this countless times before. I put the primer on, I go to put the foundation on, and it basically, it like peeled, the foundation peeled off my skin in strips, pretty much. I can't explain it any other way. I would try to buff it in. I tried it with a sponge. I tried it with a brush. It just would not mix with this. I could not get it to work. I had to take off my makeup, which I cannot tell you how annoying that is to me. Reapply my sunscreen and start over, okay? Right then and there, I used it twice. I didn't even want to give it another try because here's the thing. 
I understand that there are certain primers for certain foundations or looks, but, but as I'm looking at all my primers that are sitting out on my vanity, I have primers that, you know, are pore filling and smoothing. I have primers that are luminous and I'm going to use them with different foundations depending on the actual effect that I want. However, most, if not all of those primers on there work with at least 75% of my foundations, at least to where I can wear the foundations. Okay, I've never used a primer that's on my vanity where I have to actually physically take the foundation off. So I know people are gonna be like, but this is more of like a clean orga organic brand. Maybe there's something in it that didn't mix with it. And that's fine, maybe that's right. But why am I gonna keep a primer that I don't know is gonna work with certain foundations or that I know, oh, I really wanna wear this. I want the longevity that this provides, but I can't wear them together. I'm just, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I, it was such an awful horrid experience. I should have taped it or at least taken a picture of it to give you proof, but I'm just not of the bandwagon fan club of this primer. So I actually put it on my blog sale. Somebody purchased it. I'm mailing it out today. I have only used it twice. I hope that she loves it like everybody else does, but it was not for me. So even though I only have like six or seven products to talk about, I still managed to make this a 25 minute video because my name's Mandy and that's what I do. So hopefully you enjoyed this and made it to the end. As always, I always like to know what your favorite products were for the month we were talking about. So let me know down in the comment section below what you were loving the most in the month of March. And I hope you have a fabulous start to April. As you are watching this, I am in Phoenix, probably most definitely having an awesome time. And I will be back next week with my next video. So as always, thank y'all so much for watching and I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.